Hi everyone, we are now in a weird limbo of time where Quorum cards are available on JNet but they are not implemented yet. So I'm playing my deck with Quorum cards but my opponent is not. They are up to martial law. So that's a, a, I do have the advantage over my opponent but that's offset by the fact that um, this matchup is not good for me. I'm up against Dumble Fox who although isn't running Cypher Still is a very good matchup for my opponent because they can destroy all my next dice. I'm playing Jammy HB. My opponent face checks my HQ turn two. I mean turn turn one. After installing a sucker, they're gonna get a sucker counter removed because of Cyberdex, and I get to install Architect Vitruvius in the remote. Now I know this won't keep my opponent out. What I really want to do here is to get the uh, the second Architect trigger if my opponent gets greedy. And sure enough, they install slums and go for the remote. Um, I'm quite happy that my opponent did not install slums prior to running HQ. Removing my cyberdex from the game would be pretty huge. So they do indeed go for my remote. So they will get to steal the Vitruvius here. I can't really defend the Vitruvius. Um, yeah, well, not much I can do about that. I just wanted to get the agenda out of circulation. And perhaps bait a run on the remote, which I successfully did. And... Now that I actually get to use the advanced assembly lines I installed using the second architect, I was able to install Macrophage on R&D. So that's the, um, that's the Quorum card I'm using that is going to give me an edge over my opponent and that will be a huge deal against Double Fox who is very reliant on Data Sucker and Medium. Now because I got to rest the double architect on turn 1, it seems quite bad for me, right? Uh, being forced to rest both architects put me in a very low credit level. but if there's one thing it does is that it secures HQ and my remote. So now I'm actually able to have a safe Jackson in the remote and my opponent can't really do anything about it. They don't have wild side up, they can't really contest this architect. Being forced to ditch two cards at this stage is not ideal for my opponent. So I don't reveal the Jackson yet, I simply double ice it in case my opponent decides to contest it next turn. And uh, then next turn I can use the Jackson. The reason I didn't use Jackson this turn is because um, I had blue level in my hand. Obviously I'd rather draw with blue level and get money rather than use Jackson. So now that we have a bit of lull time in the game, um, it's a good time to explain a bit of my deck. I am running a Jammy HB with Nyx Dice. Nyx Dice is because it's rather cheap. And I'm actually testing this deck as a counter to Cypher. A soft counter, would you, uh, if you don't mind. The reason why I think Nyx Dice is an okay counter against Cypher is that um, your ice is rather cheap. You're spending 2 or 3 credits to rest each ice. For each ice they parasite, they pay 2 credits. So the, uh, the runner is generally coming out ahead, but at least... Um, you are not investing a lot of money into ice that is going to get uh, reset to zero strength and parasited anyway. Uh, here my opponent runs my Jackson Howard. I was surprised that that happened. Um, I thought they wouldn't contest it. But I guess they thought it was an agenda given that I didn't do I didn't res it on the first turn that I had it. So fair enough to my opponent. They run it and I'm forced to pop the Jackson because they have slums. I reshuffle a couple of money cards back in and continue building up the server. Keeping the server built up is actually quite important because I know for a fact that my opponent will attempt to destroy the ice. The moment I revealed the next silver, um, I knew it was going to die to Parasite. So um, I needed to double ice it. Um, knowing that the Parasite will sooner or later come and there it was, the Parasite came. Um, you, Yeah, there was not much I could do about it so that definitely taxes me of money. Not much I can do about that as I said. So here I'm going to blue level and then install another piece of ice on the remote. So this is what you need to do as Dumbo, uh, against Dumble Fox. Constantly renew the ice on your remote because they are getting destroyed um, often. You want to have unrest ice in your remote and then um, when you jam an agenda, as I'm probably going to do here, um, yeah, make sure that your ice can defend the remote by costing the runner a lot of cards. The one thing that Dumble Fox can't really do is to run past a 3 deep remote. The usual way they handle a 3 deep remote is to destroy the ice. And what you can do against that is to keep your ice unread. So they only have 4 clicks to try to destroy all your 3 ice on the remote, which is very hard. Um, here my opponent doesn't even attempt going for my remote, which um, honestly I think is a mistake. Uh, given that my opponent actually drew a lot of cards. So they give me a free agenda here. Uh, not so free because I had to use a biotic for that. But since it's a corporate sales team, it's going to pay off uh, regardless, so that's fine. One thing I'm really worried about here is turntable, which my opponent plays. Very interestingly, doesn't go for the run on the same turn as playing the turntable. I'm not sure why, I guess my opponent had some very important cards in hand. 
But this leaves me with a very interesting dilemma. Do I attempt to go for the ABT score here and removing one agenda from circulation? Or do I put the uh, assembly lines in the remote? The assembly lines seem a lot clearer of a decision because I was very poor. I couldn't really defend the remote anyway. So the problem is, with 2 out of 5 agendas in hand, if my opponent runs HQ at this point, they have a very good chance of stealing one and swapping it for my sales team, which means I basically lose a lot of money. I really want the entire sales team to take down. So my opponent goes for double sucker, which I'm really worried about. Even though they are not running Cypher, they have double sucker to suck down a lot of my ice. That is not ideal. You notice that I'm running Nick's goal in this deck. This is because I Marcus Betty in the deck as well, um, as a cheesy win condition. If against shapers or criminals who have no way to kill my next dice, next goal can often be a very cheap win condition. So yeah, um, right now I'm considering whether I should go for the ABT in the remote. I decide it's too risky at this time. If my opponent runs the remote and they can successfully get through, which they will because the outer eyes are just flimsy next dice, they will steal the ABT and swap it for my sales team, which I don't want. So instead, I archive for biotics so that I can biotic the ABT. So this is a very important biotic labor. Removing one agenda from my HQ is very important. At a time where Jackson is scarce and uh, turntables on the table, you do not want your sales team to be negated. So uh, not only does it do that, it also puts me at four points. So this is a very good position for me. It means that with the food in my hand, I can win the game. That is something I am trying to angle myself towards. With double biotic labor, I can go from 4 points to 7 with a never advanced food in my hand. Uh, my opponent finally runs HQ, but that's a couple of turns too late. I don't mind them stealing food at this point. If they want to swap food to me, that's not to their advantage because it puts me on match point. I can biotic a 3-2 for the win. No wizard player would do that. So here, uh, my opponent runs HQ, and here I sack the cyberdex to remove one sucker counter. This forces my opponent to pay one more card to get past the Architect, but more importantly, it removes the Cyberdex so that uh, my opponent cannot slums it. I want Cyberdex to stay in Archives so that they cannot simply farm Sucker Tokens by running Archives. It cost me 3 credits to res the Cyberdex, but it was definitely worth it to prevent it from being slum. And that's another big thing. With my opponent installing slums on their first turn, that actually put a lot of pressure on me and forces me to play in a way that I usually wouldn't to use my cyberdex very aggressively and to yeah it's very very dangerous when my uh when i have to play around slums so my opponent goes for advanced assembly lines here which is in the remote my opponent's forced to contest this and this is where i start showing my ice the next silver on the outermost costs two cards my opponent they choose not to go for it instead playing daily cards very surprising move but the right one they would much rather do a knife run or parasite the silver instead of spending two cards just to see what's in my remote. So because of this, I had to react accordingly and I sub the next silver. I do not want them running through the server this turn because I have a Vitruvius in there right now. So this server should look very intimidating for my opponent. And again, back to what I was saying earlier, making it very, very difficult for my opponent to contest this server because they only have four clicks to get past this entire server of nonsense. Um, unfortunately, they do draw a lot of cards, they have a David out, and they have a Parasite on my next silver. Because I have a Vitruvius in the remote, I'm actually forced to rest this next goal right here. This is going to be a very huge tempo setback for me, for not a lot of tags on my opponent, but I think it's worth it here. I need to draw out as many cards from my opponent as possible and make sure they are deterred from getting the Vitruvius at the end of my server. If they get the Vitruvius, they match me in the gender points it's going to be a, much, a lot harder for me to win. So I need to keep the pressure on my opponent, keep forcing them to make runs, and possibly jacking out at the end of the run. Um, so they spend a couple of cards on the goal. Uh, let's see if they continue. They do. I res the Mother Goddess here. This is going to cost my opponent a lot of cards. Three for the Architect, two for the Goddess. They can't afford it. They jack out, and I get to score the Vitruvius. So this is huge for me. I go up to six points. My opponent's still on two. This the pressure really is on because I can now threaten a biotic win. So the best thing for my opponent to do right now is to medium lock me, which they kind of do. After getting one medium counter, however, my opponent stops short, doesn't run again, despite me being only on two credits, clearly telegraphing that I can't rest either of the eyes on R&D. What do they do instead? I'm not very sure. Instead, they go Spoon HQ. I guess they really want to remove the threat of me having a possible pre-2 in my hand, which is a good move. 
Don't get me wrong, it also reduces the number of Nick Sykes on the table, but I felt that my opponent could have collected more medium counters and posed a greater threat on R&D. Regardless, uh, the Spoon HQ is going to come in, and this is really bad for me. I was really hoping they didn't do it. It turned out to be the right decision actually by my opponent to run it, because what they got to do is access the Jackson and remove it from the game, effectively removing one of my outs. Jackson's really nice because it can shuffle my deck, allowing me to top deck winning agendas through R&D lock. It also allows me to draw. It also perform uh, serves as remote bait, as what I'm doing right here, putting my third Jackson in the remote to bait a run on the gold server, and also um, just gives me a lot of draw power to draw into my money, my biotics, and my the three two agenda that I still need. And Jackson also allows me to shuffle money and biotics back in my deck. It just is a very good card. Surprise, surprise. Um, Jackson's a good card. Who knew? Fork comes in on a remote, and this is my biggest worry. Uh, the 8 res cost ice is gone just like that. Imagine if my opponent had Cypher. Now, um, uh, yeah, uh, this was not ideal at all. And as I said, I do pack Marcus Betty in my deck, but I haven't seen it even though I've drawn through 60% of my deck, run two copies, don't see either of them. That's such is life. If I were able to threaten a Betty fire, that would have been huge. Being able to trash X programs and then force them to eat both subroutines of next goal, that would have been huge. That would have uh, thwarted the fork and possibly basically win me the game. Um, well, instead, I'm forced to sack Jackson and deal with the fact that my remote is a lot less taxing than it used to be. But it's okay, my last agenda is going to be scored via Biotic. That's my plan anyway. Now, I mentioned that I built this deck as an attempt to uh, f try to counter Cypher. While most people are complaining that the sky is falling and just giving up on all hope on, of the game, I'm here trying to work out if there's a way to make Cypher less of a pain. And my solution is drawn right here, it's Sandberg. Now, assuming the rules work the way that I interpret them to, when Cypher reduces strength ice of ice, it only reduces the base strength. Strength modifiers are, are then applied later, so something like Wrap Around's Claws plus 7 strength or Curtain Wall's Claws plus 4 strength will still be in effect, which means that the opponent cannot insta-parasite ice because they're not in zero strength. The same applies to Sandberg, if I'm correct. So, if I have an active Sandberg, they cannot simply Cypher the ice to zero and then parasite them down. And that's hopefully something that I can leverage uh, on. But back to this game. My opponent bumps into a macrophage and this is a huge problem for my opponent. So it's a seven strength code gate with four subroutines. My opponent's too poor, so they can't really let any of the subroutines fire. As such, they have to pay the iron price. One sucker counter to bring it to six and then break the subroutines using a lot of cards, but my opponent has a David on the board and they'll probably use that instead. They can break three subroutines. Um, I, yeah. So Macrophage is just really strong right now. Um, the fact that I can completely wall my opponent from R&D is a huge deal. This buys me time and the ability to draw through my deck to find the 3-2 I need to win the game, along with the Biotic Labor. So yeah, as you see here, David is used and they let the trace fire, trace one on the end of run. And my opponent pays through the trace and I actually let them access two cards from R&D here. So not really walling off my opponent, but taxing them hugely and preventing any further runs. They get two medium dig, I mean, two counters on medium dig right here. That's it. They are not gonna run again. Unfortunately, they, my opponent found a batty. The Batty should have came way earlier, but well, not much I can do about that. So the next thing I need to do here is to immediately re-ice R&D with the second Macrophage in my hand. This is a huge deal. My opponent can still very easily spoon the Macrophage. Um, and with Cypher, that's definitely possible, even though my opponent's not running it. So you need to always keep ice on top of your rest ice to make things really hard. Ideally, the outer ice would be a Nyx Bronze. This completely walls off Macrophage. Uh, Macrophage spoon. Uh, well, but uh, having a second macrophage on R&D is still really, really good. Don't get me wrong. Now, my opponent runs HQ here. One of the great tra traits of a good runner, as my opponent showed here, is keeping constant pressure on HQ, keeping you honest, making sure you don't have agendas in hand, and farming data sucker counters on the way. With three data sucker counters, my opponent can more easily spoon the macrophage now, because you need an odd number of sucker counters to put it uh, in the just right range for Faust. Thankfully, my opponent hit the food, which I wasn't intending to score instead of the Sandberg, which I really wanted. 
at some point I'm going to jam the sandbox in my remote once I get restructured money. You notice I have sandbox and restructure in my hand, they are blanked out because JNet is a bit buggy. So apologies for that. Now my opponent spend the, spends their last click to spoon R&D, given that they have a lot of cards in hand and 3 sucker counters, it seems reasonable. And I reveal the second macrophage, which to, it, which will absorb the spoon. So I still have one more macrophage on R&D to wall my opponent out. Notice that all this, wow, this means that my opponent isn't getting R&D accesses because they're forced to jack out after the first macrophage, which means I can draw my 3 2s. So this is the main reason why a lot of people lose to um, Anarchs nowadays. Deep medium digs are the bane of everyone's life, but not if you have a wall to keep them out, and macrophage is that wall. I draw the Baltic. I just need a 3-2 to win the game, but I have to be careful. If I draw into the 3-2 and my opponent accesses it by HQ run, I'll be a very sad panda. We don't want that. So I keep drawing and I discard expensive ice like Fairchild 3. I know that that's never going to come into play. Because I was forced to rest the Macrophage last turn, I d couldn't get into restructure range, so the Sandbox is delayed yet another turn. Um, I really do want to get the Sandbox up because um, with a sandbox, I can threaten Architect at 5 or 6 strength, which is very very annoying for my opponent to break. So that's one of, of the nice upsides of sandbox. Um, it can really punish a runner that's not expecting to break high strength, ice that is higher strength than they can currently break. I find a winning agenda, so the sandbox play doesn't even come to play as I score out for the win. So some conclusions I drew from this game. Um, you know that I've played a bit of frame codes. Uh, prior to this, and this has a completely different economy package. Instead of Eve and Adonis campaigns in Breaker Bay grid servers, I'm running restructures and blue levels instead, along with advanced assembly lines. You notice that because um, I'm using these smaller burst econ cards, I need more of them. So I actually have 12 econ cards, hedge, restructure, advanced lines, and blue level, three of each plus HB ETF's ability. That's a lot of econ, but I feel like it's necessary because your main game plan is scoring with Baltics and your eyes, um, while most of them are in the low range, you still have the next goal, a couple of fair childs. You know, these are not cheap to res. I felt very comfortable with my economy this game, um, which was a bit unexpected given that I'm up against Downward Fox, which can deny my eyes really well. This just goes to show you how powerful Next Dice is. The fact that they are so cheap to rest means that I can actually uh, maintain them with relative ease. So I felt very good about my economy this game. Um, it wasn't too much, it wasn't too little. I was able to rest my next goal to protect my um, remote server and still use Baltics to score out for the win. The Architects were amazing early game ice. You have no idea how important it was to set up the two early Architects on HQ and the remote. This made it very very difficult for my opponent to bring themselves to run those servers even though they know that there might be agendas in there. Having to say, okay, I have to give up three cards every time I want to check HQ or check the remote. That's usually a very bad trait for the runner who is trying to set up the rest of their rig. Uh, heading into the mid to late game, while the architects started losing effectiveness because MK Ultra was installed, Macrophage came into play and defended the correct server, R&D. It walled off my opponent completely and allowed me to draw the winning um, 3-2 agenda off the top of R&D for the win. As I said, this is how you usually lose against Double Fork. They get the late game arm lock on your R&D and you cannot draw your winning agenda. But in this case, that never happened because of the double macrophage, even defending against a single spoon. So two macrophage seems like a decent amount. Of course, um, they are rather dead against most criminals and shapers. That's something to keep in mind. One more thing to note is that I wasn't playing against a Cypher opponent, my opponent was on traditional Double Fork. So I can't really draw any conclusions on how my deck performs against Cypher, we'll just have to keep testing and find out. One last thing before we go, I'm continually striving to improve video quality for you viewers, and one way I'm going to do this right now is to try out YouTube's end screen feature. With this, I can easily redirect you to my Twitter page or another one of my related videos. But the main purpose of this is to link you to the deck list that was featured in this game. Now I cannot use YouTube to link to NetrunnerDB directly because it's not my website. However, I can link to my Patreon page. So what I'm going to do is for every video that I have a deck list of, I will post a Patreon post which contains the NetrunnerDB link to the deck list in question. I know this is rather convoluted, but 
I'm going to experiment with this and I would really appreciate your feedback and suggestions on this. For my dear Patreon patrons, because I will be posting a new post every time I upload a new video, you will be spammed with notifications every time I put a new post on Patreon. I understand most of you do not want your email inboxes flooded, so kindly follow the link in this end screen to the Patreon post where I explain to you how to deactivate notifications from my posts. There are two kinds of notifications, those which are available to the public and those which only Patreon patrons can see. My posts with that list will be available for everyone. So all you need to do is to deactivate the email notifications for just the public posts. Once again, to all you loyal Patreon supporters out there, I can't thank you enough for your kind and generous support, which has been a very strong driving factor in pushing me to continuously improve on my videos to deliver high quality content for all you wonderful viewers to enjoy. That's all I have for now. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your generous support and happy net running. See you around.